Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Crystal Healing. This is your host, Crystal Heal. This evening on this Gaudio, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, conscious community, mind slaves, and their mental masters. And um, later on in the in the um, Gaudio, we're going to talk about how your your what is happening in the present right now is actually creating the past. And I want to give you guys a practical look at uh, how that is happening. We talk about often of, of how the past, the present, and the future exist at the same time, but we don't really give too many practical applications to that or practical examples where you can actually see how what you are doing right now can be found either in the past or in the future. And so I intend to do that uh, this evening on this Gaudio. But for the main topic, I want to talk about the slave-master dichotomy that um, we witness going on in the conscious community as it is right now. Um, and what I mean by slave-master dichotomy, um, you know, me personally, I wish above all things that everyone be sovereign in their own spirit. And by sovereign, I mean uh, have control over your own thought life. Uh, be able to move in your thought life uh, at will without being constrained by others. Uh, we've all, most of us, have come from the religious community, where in the religious community our thought life was um, chained down, so to speak. We were given prescribed directions in which to think and uh, were forbidden to think outside of those prescribed uh, thought patterns. But I'm finding the same thing happening in the so-called conscious community. Uh, it is another form of religion in that um, it was supposed to, it was intended to uh, allow liberty of thought when in reality what's going on is, is we're seeing a lot of uh, mental masters here uh, directing people's thoughts and prescribing what they should think and um, giving them another form of hell if they don't think on those terms. And so, uh, you know, that was bothering me. And as always, when something is bothering me, uh, you know, I, I tend to contemplate and meditate on those things so I can get better clarity on them. And uh, that is exactly what I done. And so I'm going to give y'all what... Um, was given to me because, uh, you know, and this is a little tidbit for you guys. Whenever you're feeling some uh, what they call cognitive dissonance, some type of dis-ease within yourself, uh, it is best. It is always best to bring that thought, whatever that diseasing thought is, back under the subjection and the obedience of Christ. And what I mean by that is under the subjection and obedience of wisdom, wisdom and the reality of what is here. Now, I, I realized something pivotal, you guys. And thank you all. I see you all on here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Javon, uh, all of you, thank you so much. Todd, um, I found something pivotal uh, that, that I wasn't factoring in as I was being uh, diseased by the thought of the master-slave dichotomy. And that is the slave will always give birth to her master. I'm going to say that again because that, I promise you there's more in that statement than you, may, than you may perceive at first. The slave will give birth to her master. Now, when this saying came to me, it let me know that the problem is not trying to get rid of the master mentality, which is the first thing we want to do. We want to hate on the masters. We don't like the way you're, you're, you're prescribing thoughts for people and forbidding them to think outside. Of, you know, the masters are the pastors. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get mad at the conscious community masters or the religious community pastors. For owning slaves, mental slaves. But the slave will give birth to her master. You see, what that means is that the master came because the slave gave birth to him. Now, I'm going to tell it to you in a way that you may be more familiar with, that may make a little more sense to you. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm. 
Catch that now. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Now we accept that axiom and we say, oh, that is a good axiom. But we don't realize that it works in the reverse. It work, You see, all the laws of nature, all the principles of nature are neutral. They can be used for good and for bad. So when we say when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, that's what we call good. Not realizing that also, too, when the slave is ready, the master will appear. Now, in, our, in, in the way we think in good and evil, in, in dualistic thinking, we would say that the slave being ready and the master appearing, that's negative. We don't like that. We don't want that to happen. We don't want no slaves and no masters. We don't mind students and teachers, but we don't want slaves and masters. But understand this, which is something that I was having a problem with, but I had to get it correct in my spirit. There are no accidents. There are no coincidences, only synchronicities. Understand that the slave called for the master. See, when you're thinking in terms of one lifetime, you're thinking, oh, well, you know, a slave having a master is a bad thing. But understand that the sheer act of the slave being present calls forth the master in the same way that the sheer act of a student mentality being present calls forth the teacher. To bring balance until the student becomes the teacher and the slave becomes the master. Now, let me tell you another example that we hear this, but we don't perceive them in the same way. We hear a lot about supply and demand. We know full and well that it is the sheer act of having a demand that causes the supply to appear. Hmm? Now, at the root of what we're talking about this evening is a fundamental truth of reality. A fundamental truth of reality and you can exercise your mind in a way to where you begin to see all of reality this way. Now don't get it twisted, I slip. But you got to bring every thought under the obedience of Christ, which means you have to bring every thought under the obedience of the reality of this reality. Hmm? Now, the demand calls for the supply in the same way that the front of a piece of paper necessarily lets you know that there's a back. You will never find a front where there also is not a back. Understand that. You will never find a master if there wasn't already a slave. You will never find a teacher where there are no students. And you will never find a predator where there is no prey. And what I am saying is, is that trying to get rid of the predator mentality is not what we should be doing. If we get rid of the prey mentality, then predators have nothing to feed upon. If we get rid of the slave mentality, then masters have no one to lord over. You understand? So too, realize that order comes out of chaos. Grasp what I said. Order comes out of chaos in the same way that light came out of darkness. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the master comes out of the slave. Mm -hmm. And we really should work on getting rid of the slave mentality. Now, how do we do that? Now, this is not orthodox thinking. You see, our way, is, our way of thinking is not the thinking of the universe. The universe is, is infinitely more wiser. That's not even grammatically correct, but infinitely wiser than we are. Understand that the, 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 the universe pairs things with its opposite. We even see this written in scripture when it says that God said that it's not good for man to be alone. Let me make him a helpmeet or uh, a, a, um, a counterpart. 
That's another way of saying that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You see, in the same way order comes out of its opposite, which is chaos, the master comes out of its opposite, which is a slave. You understand what I'm saying? Eve came out of her opposite, which was Adam. These are all principles. Whether Adam and Eve really existed, it doesn't matter. But there's a principle there that they're trying to teach you. You understand? The tree comes out of its opposite, which is the seed. Light comes out of its opposite, which is darkness. Grace, according to scripture, came out of law, its opposite. You understand? Grace and law. Mm -hmm. Grace came out of, out of law. And so too, and so too, the still small voice comes out of silence. Hmm? The still small voice only comes out of silence. Have you heard the axiom, if you want to get out, you got to go in? Hmm? It's the same principle that I am trying to express here. You know, if you look on the Freemasons and any occultic secret societies, you'll see they, they always have that checkerboard floor. Black, white, black, white, black, white. And it's always uh, 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 alternating black and white. And this is what they're trying to to symbolize in a representative way is that things always come out of their opposites and they, 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 they exist together as a snake has a head and a tail. So, too, everything does. They are the same in nature, but they are opposite in degrees. The same in nature, but opposite in degrees. Hi, Marcus Jones. Hi, Todd, Zena. Thank you all for tuning in. Avery Jefferson Carp. Thank you so much. They are the same in nature, opposite in degrees. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by the same in nature, opposite in degrees. Everything that you know is that that you know as a opposite in, out, up, down, good, bad. You know, things like that. They are of the same nature, but opposite degrees. Same thing like Jesus and what we consider Satan. Same nature, opposite degrees. Now, a practical example of that to help you understand what I mean by that is faith and fear. You see, faith, as according to the scriptures, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Which basically means uh, another idea. It's, it's the same thing as fear, really. What's the acronym for fear? They say that fear is false evidence appearing real. Correct? False evidence appearing real. Faith is exactly the same thing. Faith, technically, is false evidence appearing real. That's right. False evidence appearing real. The difference between fear and faith is, is that fear will lead you to repulsion. Faith leads you to attraction. But I want you to understand that faith and fear share the same exact nature, but opposite degrees. Okay. So too, the slave and the master share the same exact nature, but opposite degrees. Now, how do you annul the master? And how do you annul the slave? By bringing them together. They cancel out. Positive and negative cancel each other out. All my math majors out there. Positive one added to a negative one equals what? Zero. Ground zero. They cancel each other out. So, in the infinite wisdom of the universe, by pairing these opposite, it cancels them both out and you find balance. You see, because that's where we want to be. We do not want to be mentally or physically anyone's slave. But at the same token, neither do we, neither do we desire to be anyone's mental or physical master either. I, well, I don't personally. I don't want to be anybody's master. And I sure as hell don't want to be anybody's slave. I want to master myself and be slave of my own will. You understand? But how do you do that? When you find a person who has a predominantly slave mentality, meaning that they have not owned themselves, then by the sheer act of their existence, they bring into existence a master. You see, because th that's what they call dying. You see, that's why it's called dying. Die means two. You split into two. You are not holy, holy, 
whole. You understand? So you split into when you when you migrate over towards slave thinking, you automatically split yourself in two. Now you're slave and your master. You've died. You see, so by pairing the slave with the master, then they come back together and cancel each other out and you receive balance again. You're not a slave, nor are you a master. You're not a student, nor are you a teacher. You understand? You don't have order, but you don't have chaos either. You see, and this and you're not Eve and you're not Adam either. You heard about how the first man was androgynous. It was male and female joined together. And that is what I'm talking about here. Joining the opposites is how you experience heaven. The dualistic thinking is death thinking. That's why it's called die because it's two. You see the yin and you see the yang, but you don't see how yin and yang are together. Front and back exist together. That's right. Mm hmm. Let me show you another example of how this works. You see, truth, now this one, a lot of y'all are going to revolt on this one. I'm pretty sure of it. But did you know that truth can come out of lies? Yeah, that's right. Just like the slave will give birth to her master. Did you know that lies can give birth to the truth? Mmm, that's deep. Grasp that. Lies can give birth to the truth. Don't believe me? Well... I'm all about practicality, so let me give you some practical examples of that. The Bible, the book that everyone loves to hate. They say it's all full of fairy tales, and indeed it is. It's full of analogies, parables, and fairy tales, just like they said. Lies, full of lies. But guess what? Those lies can birth in your life the truth. That's right, because within those lies is the truth. Just like cartoons and TV, you, you know, we, we, we're getting very skilled now into picking apart movies. We're picking through the lies to get to the truth, like the movie Matrix. Movie Matrix is a fictional movie. Lies, nothing but lies. But did we not get truth from it? Hmm? Did we not learn from that movie the truth of that it is not about bending the spoon, but realizing the truth that there is no spoon? Hmm? Yeah, lies, all lies. But those lies birth in our life the truth. Now, the main one right now is the Black Panther. Everybody is, is riding on Black Panthers, you know what. But they're pulling truth out of it, out of the lie of Wakanda. Wakanda is not even a real place. That's right, according to this world Anyway, but out of the lies of Wakanda, the lies of the whole Black Panther movie, people are pulling truth out of it. They're seeing Wakanda as the kingdom of heaven, possibly. You can even look at Wakanda as the Moroccan empire over there, at which point Noble Drew Ali would be like Killmonger. But understand what I'm saying. Truth can be birth from lies. Yes, it can. And the Christ can be birthed from the Antichrist. Don't believe me? Well, Scripture says that Jesus came unto his own, but his own received him not. His own being the Jews. But did you not know in the Scriptures that Jesus said that the Jews were of the devil, whom their father, who is their father? Their father was a liar from the beginning. So, you see, now this is a little bit deep, and a lot of y'all not going to want to hear this, but it don't really matter. The truth is what it is. Moses was actually more or less like the Antichrist in, in the scriptures because you see there was the Ten Commandments and uh, but but he added w what is called Moses law and Jesus had to come to separate the people from Moses's law not God's law Moses's extra added own law so the point is is that the Christ was born from the Antichrist you ever wonder why God took Moses out he wasn't allowed to go into the Holy Land because Moses was technically the Antichrist nevertheless the Christ was born from the Antichrist. Order is born from chaos. The master is born from the slave mentality. Hmm? Yes. Now, I want you to do something for me. I'm going to take this a little bit deeper. Imagine a piece of paper, a piece of white, plain piece of paper, one with no lines. Now, I want you to draw a circle. In the middle of that piece of paper, in your mind's eye, 
white piece of paper, draw a round circle. Now color that circle in black. Do you see it in your mind's eye? Can you see the white piece of paper with the black circle right in the middle? Now, let me tell you something. The sheer fact that you created an object on that piece of paper means that you also created the background. Follow me now. I know this is a little deep, but follow me. You see that round circle on your piece of paper. That is an object. Now, by you creating that object, you turn that piece of paper into two things. It was just now one piece of paper. Now it is two different things. It is a background and it is an object. All you did was drew the object by, but by your simple act of drawing an object on that piece of paper, you also created the background. Hmm? And that's what I want you to understand, that by the creation of, of a slave, you automatically create the master. Don't get mad at the master. Don't get mad at the predator. You understand? It is the slave who created the master. So if you find yourself being a mental slave, don't blame it on the master. Blame it on yourself. You know, it goes back to those same, the same ideology of uh, people in abusive relationships. We, we, we always want to blame the abuser. But when you really stop and think about it, that something the abuser needs to be able to be an abuser, and the abuser needs a victim. That's right. And now a lot of victims are willingly victims. You see, because an abuser can't abuse a non-victim. Grasp what I just said. An abuser cannot and will not abuse a non-victim. Meaning if you decide that you are not going to be a victim, that you are not going to be abused, there's nothing that that abuser can do. There's an old saying, give me liberty or give me death. Hmm? The abuser needs a victim. The master needs a slave. Grasp what I just said. Now, now this is the point of the Gaudio where I begin to show you how you are creating your past right now by your spirit man. As a preliminary to this second portion, I want to make something very clear to those who haven't already known. Now, this portion is going to take some flexibility of thinking. If you are not used to flexing your mind, then this section will not be for you. If you are not used to looking at this reality from multiple perspectives, then this section will not be for you. If you are used to thinking rigidly, then this portion of the Gaudio will not be for you. Now, Preliminary to me going into this, I want you to understand that everything that is happening in your spirit right now is going to create your past. We all know, or most of us, we should know at this point anyway, that everything that we consider matter is really spirit that slowed down. That we should know that we only see 1% of all of the electrical information there is for us to receive, Right? We know that matter is really spirit. Now, understand that we have discovered in this so-called conscious community a, a new world of thought, a completely new world of thought. Now, y'all going to have to be flexible with me on this because this is difficult, difficult to articulate because what I'm trying to do in your mind is synthesize your present life and your past life. Understand that your spirit man is indeed a man. Your spirit man is indeed a man, just as much as your physical body is considered a man. Your physical body can be injured, so can your spiritual body, your spirit man. You ever heard someone say, you've hurt my feelings, and it is indeed a hurt. It is probably a deeper and more horrific hurt than a physical hurt. I'd rather you break my leg than hurt my feelings. But nevertheless, I want you to understand that your spirit man is indeed a man that has a body. But your spirit man, what it does right now, slows down and solidifies and becomes you in the past. 
you've heard the saying that you are your ancestors. Now, let me tell you how. We have discovered in the so-called conscious community a new world of thought. And by relationships with other people, we are being slowly taken from the old world of thought, which is for most of us some form of religion, whether it be Christianity, Islamism, Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, who knows? Whatever your predominant religion was, and I say was because I believe I'm talking to people who have migrated over to this new world of thought. This new world of thought is one of frequency, vibration, and energy. That is what we are talking about these days. We're not talking about baptisms and laying on of hands and all of these different things that we were in the old world of thought. The new world of thought is talking about chakras, energy, vibration, manifestation, and things of those sort. So do you clearly see, before we continue on, do you clearly see the distinguishing between the old world of thought, known as our old religions, and this new world of thought, which includes chakras and crystals and sage and witchcraft and all kinds of stuff, right? So understand that by your relationship, see, you got over here most people. Most people got over here in this new world of thought who, that we have called the conscious community by way of ship. By way of ship. That's right. Because, see, there's a big gulf between the, 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 the way you used to think and the way you're beginning to think now. Big gulf. Big, 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 big gulf. And a lot of y'all just didn't have the mental resources to make the journey across the ocean. But you got into a relationship with somebody that's done been over here in the new world of thought. And you got in that relationship and they slowly brought you over that big gulf from what you used to be to what you are now. Now you are in this new world of thought. I want you to see the parallel before I continue on. I want you to see the parallel between this conscious community and this new way of thinking, this new world of thought and Back in the day, what we call back in the day when they discovered this continent over here. Now, I'm over in America. I don't know where you're listening from, but I'm in North America. OK, there was a point in time when the world did not know about North and South America. And so when they discovered it, stumbled up on it, they said. This is the new world. But how many of you know, just as we in the conscious community are so-called discovering these new, this new world of thought, this kundalini rising chakras and shit like that. How many of you know you can't discover some shit that was already discovered? <laughs> I'm going to say that again. You cannot discover some shit that was already discovered. Okay. And so in the same way, conscious community, I want you to know, though you may think that a lot of y'all out here may think that you're the first one to discover this new world of thought. But if you look back in the annals of history, you'll realize that Jesus made it to this new world of thought before you did. Buddha did. Confucius did. Muhammad did. And before all of them did, the Egyptians did. That's right. The Egyptians made it to the new world of thought before anybody did. Mm -hmm. They knew about the kundalini. They knew about the chakras. That's right. And after the Egyptians, then was the Indians, the Hindus. That's right. They knew about the chakras, the chi, the prana, and everything else. Right. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, then, then comes us. Now, we've discovered what they've been discovered a long time ago. And so I want you to know that in the annals of the past, the conscious community, us right now, the people who are spearheading and who are who are crossing people over from their old religion into this new world of thought. I would imagine would be like the Moors. Who didn't necessarily make it to the shore first. Because the Africans were here first. Y'all know ancient Egypt? Yeah, they got it written all over the walls, the Book of the Dead, all of that. Yes, right. They've been talking about the same stuff the conscious community is talking about right now. Even the Hindus, look at the Bhagavad Gita's and all of the, all of the, the Indian, quote unquote Indian, philosophy. And realize that they had, they made it to this, this new consciousness before we ever got here. Mm-hmm. 
That's right. And now by relationships, you've been you've been driven over the gulf from your old way of thinking to your new way of thinking. But see, when we over here in this new world of thought, it was supposed to be freedom of thought over here. That's right. You see, this was a new thing, just like the, the establishment of the American Constitution and so on and so forth was supposed to be a new thing. Everybody over here was supposed to be sovereign. Meaning there wasn't supposed to be no slaves in the conscious community. Hmm? That's right. That's it. You see, that's why we left the religious community, the old world, because of the slavery that the pastors was putting on people. That's not to say that all the pastors are bad pastors and are slaving the congregation, but a vast majority are. You understand? A vast majority are. Again, a, 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 a mental pastor translates over and solidifies into a physical master. Grasp what I'm saying. Now, over here in this new world of thought, this so-called conscious community, there wasn't supposed to be no slaves. You see, that's why we left the old world. That's why we left religion. You see, we heard about the new world of thought, this kundalini manifestation, this chakra, this vibration, energy, sage. We heard about it. Oh, and it sounds so beautiful, that new world of thought, unexplored areas of consciousness. That's right. We jumped on the first ship over here. Mm hmm. Yes, we did. That's right. No, they, they didn't chain us up, dragging, screaming to come here on this new world of thought. No, we heard about it. We heard about it and we wanted to see the new world of thought. But you see, something happened. Mm hmm. Something happened. When you got over here, you didn't know. You see, a lot of people, this is how you turn into a slave over here in this new world of thought. How the fuck you a slave in the conscious community and the conscious community was designed to liberate you. In the same way that America was established, supposedly established, to be a land of freedom and bravery and shit like that. So how the fuck you come over to America and end up a slave in the land of the free? And I'm asking the same question to the conscious community. How the fuck you leave religion, come over to the conscious community to be in religion again? <laughs> Sound like they sold your ass a dream. <laughs> you see, and a lot of y'all want to go back home. You want to go back to your old way of thought because you remember it was nice and comforting. You had Jesus to comfort you at night. The idea of Jesus. You had the idea of a God in heaven with the staff looking down to comfort you at night. And you want to go back home. You want to go back to thinking that Jesus is real and, and you, you, you want to go back to your old way of thinking. That's right. You want to call, you want to cross the ocean and go back home because over here in the conscious community is, it's not as warm and welcoming. As you thought it would be. You don't have all the amenities you had back in your old world of thinking. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of barren out here. They got bears and shit. And, you know, it's scary over here. So you want to go back home. But the problem is you don't know how now. You don't know how. You didn't cross the ocean wide in thinking. And you do not know how to get back from where you are, what you are thinking now in this so-called conscious community, energy, vibration, chakras, and kundalini, and how to go back to what you was thinking because the gulf is too wide. That's right. That's right. And you just don't have a boat. You don't have no type of ship, no relationship with anybody that can take you back home. So you're stuck over here. <laughs> you're stuck over here in this conscious community. But it's a scary, it's a scary uh, area of consciousness. You see, this is an area unexplored. You don't know what's around the corner for your ass. Shit, shit is different over here than it was in the old world of thought. That's right. Mm -hmm. They got animals over here that you never seen. Mm -hmm. Sure do. Mm-hmm. Now, how did you become a slave in the conscious community? Hmm? How did you become a slave in the land of the motherfucking free? In the new world of thought? <laughs> that was supposed to be <laughs> the place where everybody owns themselves. Hmm? Ain't that what America's supposed to be about? Everybody's supposed to own themselves? That's right. But you don't. 
a lot of you don't because you see you came here trusting someone who said I've been over there in the chakra kundalini the vibrations I know all about it let me tell you about it but you didn't know anything about it yourself and you came here trusting them Mm -hmm. and they brought you over into this new thought but because you don't know the landscape you are left trusting your teacher or your master whatever you want to call them. But what has happened is, is now you've become a slave because you're scared. You don't understand the landscape. The plants is different. The animals is different in this new way of thinking. You understand? And the person that you trusted to navigate you through this shit has now enslaved you. That's right. And they, 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 you see, in this conscious community now where you're supposed to be free of thought, you're supposed to own yourself. You're supposed to be able to to utilize your thinking to its fu fullest capacity. But we're not doing that in this so-called conscious community. We're, you know, what we do is we, 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 we watch videos and we, we listen to people and we just tack on their ideas. That's oh, he said that's right. So that's what I'm going to do. But you're not using your own critical thinking skills to actually to, to, to judge it, whether it is right or wrong. You understand? And so you are unwitting slave over here in this conscious community. But the conscious community, the idea of the holographic universe and vibrations and energies is to post, it's supposed to liberate you. It's supposed to let you know that it doesn't matter how you wear your hair. You're still God manifesting as a human. It does not matter what you eat. You are still God manifesting as a human. Do you understand? You see, the concept of America was everybody is a king in America. Everybody is sovereign. You see, the people were escaping that land where somebody was the king and you had to do what the king says. That is religion. See, religion says, don't look into astrology and astronomy. Stay here. You understand? Religion says, don't look into Eastern philosophy and all of that pagan shit. Stay here. So it kept you on a, a mental plantation. You understand? And you flocked to the conscious community because it is, it is rebelling against the king, a.k.a. Jesus or religion or whatever in your mind you have made it to be. And you came, you crossed the gulf of thinking over to the conscious community only to become a slave again. <laughs> and that's exactly what has happened, you guys. But I want you to see how what's going on right now is creating what you consider the past. What's happening right now is the great migration. You see, the new world has been, it's been discovered. It was discovered a long time ago by Jesus. Jesus tried to tell people about the new world of thought. Confucius, Buddha, uh, uh, Osiris, and Horus, and, and all the other greats that you can ever think of. Muhammad, the noble Drew Ali, all of these people tried to teach you about the new world of thought. But see, nobody believed that it was real. Oh, you crazy. <laughs> yeah, they'll lock your ass up. Burn you at the stake. Yeah, that's right. The witches tried to tell you about the new world of thought. Nobody didn't want to listen to them then. But the point is, is that this new world of thought isn't exactly new. Kind of like what the new world of America, when they so-called so so discovered it, it wasn't really new. People had been there before. And so, too, with this conscious shit, I know you want to believe that you originated it. Uh-huh, I know, but you didn't. It's been here quite some time now. And just like C Christopher Columbus didn't discover shit, neither did you. It's been here, boo. <laughs> you just couldn't see it, you understand? But now what we're having in the, uh, in, in the mental world is the great migration. We are migrating from the old world of thought, the old world of thinking, and we are you're seeing a mass migration over into the new world of thought. And I want you to know that it is right now, predominantly, it is the black people. And by black, I mean melanated. I use the term very loosely. It is the melanated people who are. How do I say this without being offensive? You are, let me put it to you this way. You know how they say they had moors on the ship with Christopher Columbus showing his ass how to get here? <laughs> well, I want you to know that all the conscious community leaders are like the moors who are getting in relationships with Europeans and showing them how to get here. 
So I want you to know all you conscious community leaders that in a little while, nobody will ever know you existed. Yeah, I know. I know. Even though you help everybody migrate their ass over into this new way of thought, kundalini, you know, uh, chakras and vibrations, energy, holographic universe, blah, blah, blah. I understand that you were very pivotal in helping people get over to this new area of thought. But in a little while, nobody's even going to fucking remember that you did that shit. Mm -hmm. That's right. Nobody's going to remember. So you're like the Moors who were on the ship with Christopher Columbus showing him the way. You see, <laughs> and you see, you know, uh, 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 King Noble, young Pharaoh, uh, uh, master, uh, uh, teacher, uh, what was his name now? Uh, Tahuti, uh, all of these different people. Y'all like the Moors. Yeah. You in relationships, though, you may not realize that there's people that's in your boat, AKA on your frequency who are picking up information and you are literally leading them. You are, you are helping them cross the vast ocean from the old world to the new world of thought. And they're going to take over the motherfucker in a little while. So all you melanated conscious community leaders, watch how this conscious community spreads. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And your ass will, <laughs> you'll be obliterated, wiped out of history. No one will ever hear about you. Except for years, years later, somebody's going to discover a video of yours or an audio of yours and be like, oh, shit, this dude was on to this type of thinking before, you know, the, the European version. That's right. It's just like with the Moorish Science uh, Temple of America, the movement of the Moors. Well, what we got now, we got the sovereign citizen movement. You understand, which is uh, something totally different. But understand, I want you to understand what's going on. I want you to see how the past and the present are existing right now. So all of you Moors who don't want to claim that you are Moors, but indeed you are in reality Moors. How do I know that? Because I see you leading them over to the new world right now and they will be taking over. How do I know? Because I learned about history in school. That's how. That's how. That's right. I know exactly what's going to happen in this so-called conscious community. But the good news is. <laughs> the good news is. Is that there will come a point in this conscious community where people are going to realize that being a slave to hair. Being a slave to clothes. You, it, let me tell you something else in this conscious community. You see, you see, you notice when you got over here in this conscious community, they, they, they don't allow you to speak in your in your uh, the language you spoke in the old way of thinking in the old world of thought, the religious world. You realize that they don't allow you to speak in your native tongue. What do I mean by that? Fuck around and say amen on one of these conscious community uh, 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 videos and see if they don't check your ass right. You're going to get a lash or two on that ass. Cow. That's right. They're going to tell you about yourself. Mm-hmm. You might, you, you, you're going to get some whippings for that. <laughs> say amen. Let's <laughs> see what happened to your ass. That's right. You cannot speak in the, the tongue that you're so fluent in. You see, we're fluent in Christianity and Islam. Amen. Hallelujah. Fuck around and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And see, you can't speak that shit over here in the new world of thought. You better say I say, motherfucker. You better not say amen. <laughs> you better say I say. And you know what this shit remind me of? The movie Roots. What's your name, boy? <laughs> what do you say? Kunta Kente. It's Tobis. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they do yes in the conscious community. Fuck around and say amen. What you say, boy? It's our shake. You feel what I'm saying? The point is, I want you to see <laughs> that you are living in the past right now. Yay, you are even creating the past right now. And I want to ask you to do a thorough check of yourself. You know, the conscious community say, know thyself, right? Well, I want you to take a thorough look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, am I a slave in this bitch? Hmm. Does my thought life move when somebody else tells it to move? Am I afraid to go over here in my thought life because it's outside of what so-and-so said and he and her said? And hmm. How do I feel when I think about eating meat? Yeah. How do I feel? 
Do I, if I, if I think about eating a chicken leg, do I immediately feel that hell creeping up on me? Do I feel that hot whip on my motherfucking back? Hmm? That's slavery, boo. You ought to be able to think about whatever you're thinking about without feeling hell creeping up on you. Mm-hmm. That's right. You're supposed to be free in your mind, boo. Free. Mm-hmm. The slave will give birth to her master. So I want you to really check yourself and figure out who you are and what role you are playing. Because though you may not see it as real right now, I promise you when your spirit solidifies and turn into matter, it's going to be very real to you then. Are you allowing them to put them mental chains on your legs and around your neck? Hmm. Do you feel like that you are only God or a child of God if you're in a specific location? Hmm? Yeah, that's right. Do you feel like you are only God or a child of God or an expression of God if you only eat a certain food? Hmm? Do you feel like you are God or a child of God or an expression of God only if you have your hair a certain way? Do you feel like you are God or a child of God or only an expression of God if you say certain words? Well, I want you to know, my baby, if you answered yes to any one of those questions, then you, my child, are a mental slave. And I, want, I come here to tell you the truth. I come here to bring balance. To marry you, the slave in you and the master in you. And I want you to know that no matter where you are, you are still God, a child of God and an expression of God. Whether you are in the highest heaven or the lowest deserts, you are God, still the same. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that no matter what you put in your mouth, whether it's a piece of lettuce or whether it's a turkey leg, it's all energy, it's all vibration, it's all a manifestation of you. Are you letting these people convict you? Hmm? Who can bring a charge against God's elect? Do you not know who you are? Hmm? Apparently you don't. Apparently, you do not. I want you to really examine yourself and see what areas in your thought life that you are being a slave, that you still feel bounded down, whether by fear of doing the wrong thing or by fear of being looked at like you're unconscious. You see, back in our church days, it was if you... If you, you wore skirts, then you was saved. And if you wore pants, then you was a sinner. Now in the conscious community, you see, we're afraid to have perms in our hair because, see, that clearly that's an indicator that you're not conscious, right? Just like pants back in the day was an indicator that you weren't saved. Do you see that they've got the same system? They just switched it up on your ass? Mm-hmm. That's right. The slavery that you was running from is the slavery that you ran into. What the old folks say, you jump out the pot <laughs> right into the skillet. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. You are a slave because you want to be. You are a slave because you do not utilize the power that has been invested in you to not be one. Everything requires your consent. Everything requires your consent. You see, there's a reason why when you start learning about law, you realize that everything that they do to you requires your consent. And it is the same thing as above, so below, as within, so without. In the spirit, so too in life, in matter. You will not be a slave in your past because you do exist in the past as your ancestor. Yes, you do. You will not be a slave in your so-called past if you don't consent to be one in your present, do you understand? There are no unwilling slaves. All slaves are willing. Mm -hmm. No master went and got a slave. A slave goes and gets her master. 
understand that. You see, this is what they call accountability. Accountability for your life, past, present, and future, my child. There are no real victims here. If you think you are a victim, that is an illusion. There are no victims here. You are complete control of every aspect of your life. If you only knew, if you could only see, you are the author of your own life story. You are your own authority. Mm -hmm. You are the only authority in your life because you are the only author of your life. I don't care what it looked like. I'm telling you what it is. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, if you're in an abusive relationship, well, then how about you stop consenting to be abused? Mm -hmm. If you're in a slave master relationship, how about you stop consenting to being a slave? Mm -hmm. That's right. If you're in an order chaos situation, how about stop consenting to be chaos? Mm hmm. That's right. And if your world is very, very noisy, stop consenting to the noise. If it's messy, stop consenting to the mess. If it's sad, stop consenting to the sadness. Hmm? You got that power. That's right. And stop selling your souls for knowledge. Stop selling your soul for knowledge. What is your soul? Your soul is your thought life, which solidifies and becomes your body. I'm going to say that again. Stop selling your soul for knowledge. Your soul is your thought life, which in time and space solidifies and becomes your body in what is we consider the past. Stop selling your soul. You know, they say say slaves were sold on the on the block. Huh? Yeah, you thought it was the master selling the slaves? No, it was the slaves selling themselves. Stop selling your soul for a piece of knowledge because you'll be like Esau. Mm -hmm. You'll be like Esau. You was a little hungry. You was a little spiritually hungry. So you sell your birthright, which is your soul for a little piece of knowledge, spiritual pottage, food. And when you realize it, you're going to cry like Esau cried. Mm-hmm. Stop selling your thought life, which becomes your body. Move how you want to move mentally. Move how you want to move. Explore everything. Read every book you can get your hands on. That's right. Explore everything. When they tell you don't read that, don't look into this, that's what you need to read. That's what you need to look at. Become a mental traveler. Travel all the corners of consciousness that you possibly can. That's right. Explore the traditions of other people. Explore the culture of other people. And when I say the traditions and the culture, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about mental right now because how many of you know that it starts in the mind first? Mind over matter. It happens in your mind before it ever happens in your life. Hmm? And this is how you time travel. You want to know how to change the past? You in the past right now. You are creating the past right now. Simply knowing that gives you the opportunity to change the past. What they say, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. Simply knowing that you are creating the past, what we consider the past, Right now gives you the power to change it. You might be a mental slave today. Mm -hmm. You might be a mental slave today. But you have the opportunity today, today, to shake those chains off. Now, when it solidifies and turns into the past, it's going to look like some miracle-like shit. There's going to be some slave behind some barn somewhere, and the shackles will just fall off his feet. And he's not going to understand what happened. But see, that's going to be you flipped to now. That's going to be you just releasing that bullshit in the twinkling of an eye. Just like that. See how miracles are possible? Mm -hmm. You're powerful. You're powerful to change your present, your past, and your future. Claim your power today. Stop casting your crown to other people's feet. 
That's not what the conscious community is supposed to be about. That is not what this new thought wave is supposed to be about. That's not what the ancients taught. It's supposed to be about mental sovereignty, meaning no man has rulership over what you think of where your mind goes. If you want to fly in a space with your mind, then no man can tell you you can't go there. Realize that any shackles that are on your mind are only there because you allow them to be. Are only there because you allow them to be. And at the end of it all, I want you to know. You see, that's why they say that w w when you get to a certain point in understanding that, that you don't really have what they call sympathy or compassion. You do in the sense of you have compassion because people don't realize what they are doing. They don't realize how they are causing their own troubles, how they are enslaving themselves, how they are making their own selves poverty, poor. What the scripture says that your spiritual poverty is the reason you are poor. And that's true. Because as within, so without. So if you are a internal slave, you will be one without, which means outside. In the physical objective world. Now. To bring all of this. Full circle. I want you to understand. Just like the slave. Gives birth to her master. The subjective reality. Gives birth. To the objective reality. The subjective reality. Gives birth. To the objective. Reality. Now, I hopefully at this point, everybody knows the difference between subjective reality and objective reality. But in case you do not, I'm going to do a brief little something on it. Now, subjective reality is that which is internal. That means I cannot, <clears throat> excuse me, I cannot see your subjective reality. You see, pain is subjective. I, 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 there's no way for me to determine whether you are in pain or not because it's a subjective symptom. It's something only you know. I could either believe you or not believe you, but it's subjective. However, a broken leg is objective, meaning it's some shit everybody can see. It's not just something that is internal. It's external. You feel what I'm saying? So realize that your subjective reality, that means your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, all of that part of yourself that you call the spirit man creates the objective reality. It births. The objective reality. See, you thought you was born in this world, but that's not how it really works. No, the world was actually born inside of you. Mm -hmm. That's why they say when you become woke, you realize that everything is backwards. Yeah, see, see, we celebrate our birthday right now. You, you get the cake and the candles and all that shit because you think that you was born on that day. But what you don't really realize is that's not the truth. The truth is, is that you were always here and you always will be. What was born on that day was the world inside of you. Understand that? So it's not your birthday. It's the world's birthday in reality. The subjective reality births the objective reality. Meaning you birth your world in a very real way. Now, I'm going to be doing a Gaudio after I end this one, showing you how you birth your reality, how you have literally birthed this entire world that you see with your eyes, this entire world that you are experiencing with your very own spirit. I'm going to show you that in a practical way with practical examples from nature. The scripture says that we know the invisible things of him. Him being the ultimate reality by the things which are manifest. And that means that you can look at nature and understand the bigger operations of this world. You can see what you cannot see by looking at what you can see. Feel what I'm saying? <laughs> So anyway, I'll be doing that Gaudio after I end this one. Uh, but but the whole idea is, is your subjective reality, your internal world creates your external world that you view as the past. So I want you to do an inventory of yourself, take accountability of yourself and take responsibility for your life. Take responsibility and accountability for your life. Pull yourself out of the pits that you have unwittingly fell, fallen in. 
and become sovereign over your own thoughts. You know, I'd rather fall in the ditch leading myself than let you lead me in the ditch. And I think that, you know, if we all get to that place where give me liberty or give me death, fuck it. I'll just do this. I'll just have to be out there. You feel what I'm saying? And if I fail, then I fail. But I'm not I'm not finna be subjected by fear, by uh, um death by any of these illusions really because that's all they are, are illusions and so when you feel like you know by doing something or saying something or eating something or being somewhere that you're going to fall out the good graces of God I want you to know that that is a, a lie and you're just being another slave you left religion to jump into a deeper darker religion and it's what happened I want you to know that you are the expression of God no matter where you're at like the scriptures say, if I go into hell, you will be there, Lord. If I go into heaven, you will be there, Lord. If I cut open a tree, you will be there, Lord. God exists in everything. So for you to think that being anywhere and you could not be God is an illusion and it's erroneous. Understand that when you say you are going back to nature, then you are denying the fact that you are nature. I'm going to say that again. That's deep. If you say that you are going back to nature, then that in itself shows me that you are disconnected from nature. Hmm? You believe that you are disconnected from nature. Do you not know that you are nature? Do you not realize that shit? Where the fuck are you going to go that you are not at? <laughs> How the hell are you going to get back to yourself when you never left? You understand, this is the same thing religion teaches you. Religion teaches you, you was born in sin, you're horrible, you're separated from God, all this other shit. You understand, and the reality is, is there's no possible way for you to be separated from God. The only thing that separates you from God is your thought that you are separate. The only thing. <laughs> it's the only thing. But in reality, you're still connected to God because you cannot exist outside of God. Do you understand? The very breath that you breathe is God. You cannot, cannot exist Without what you consider God. And God manifests to us visibly as nature. Of which you are a part of. You're not separate from nature. No. Yeah you may be separate as much as an apple is separate from the tree that it grew on. <laughs> but how the fuck you getting back to nature? You is nature. You never left nature. You only thought you did. Stop that. You showing me how much you don't know when you say you getting back to nature. You are nature, baby. Wherever you go, God going to be there. You can't run from God. God everywhere. What they say, God is even closer to you than, 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 than your brother. Uh, some scriptures say something like God is even close, even, even the breath in your mouth. Do you not understand that? What part of that are we not understanding? Y'all letting these fools tell you that you got to get back to God. This is what you got to do to get to God and have communication with God. You know, that shit remind me of the Catholic Church. It's something like what the Catholic Church that say you can't go directly to God and talk to God. You got to go to the preacher. You got to go to the priest, father, such and such. You see, that's that master slave mentality. Father this. If there's a father there, then there must be a child. You understand? And a child means that you are not mentally old enough. To take control of the kingdom. Grasp what the fuck I just said. <laughs> if there's a father there, then there must be a child. You see, if there's a slave, there must be a master. You see, so when you call somebody else father, then you're saying you're a child. Didn't Jesus warn your ass against that? I know y'all don't want to believe Jesus was real, but you better listen to his words. Jesus says, call no man master, call no man father, call no man teacher because they're one. And that one is nature. All men learn from nature. Nature is the entity that lighted every man that cometh into this world. And that's your only teacher. Everybody else will lead you astray. Man lie, woman lie, but principles never lie. Mm -hmm. Y'all better get your mind right. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Get your mind right. Because if you want to get your body right, you got to get your mind right first. Because your mind creates your body. Mm -hmm. Mind over matter. Get your mind right. And then you can time travel. That's how you time travel. <laughs> it's very practical. <laughs> it's extremely, extremely practical. But stop being slaves to these people, bro. 
Stop being slaves, man. Just release what they say. Let go and let God just flow. Life is flowing through you. You see, it's like a whirlwind. You ever seen a whirlwind? Or, or how about this? This, this one everybody knows. See, when you taking a bath, you ever took a bath? I hope you did. I hope, I hope you did. <laughs> you ever took a bath and you, you, you let the stopper out of the bathtub. And you see down there at the drain, it makes like a little tornado, right? That's called, that's something like a whirlwind. Realize that the little tornado keeps its shape, but the water of the tornado is constantly renewing itself. As the water go down the drain, but the tornado keeps its shape. You are something like that. Realize that all the cells in your body are not the same cells that was there yesterday or not the same cells that were there a week ago. Constantly changing. Life is constantly flowing through you. The same thoughts are not there. Everything is in a, in, it's in a constant state of movement. You are like that whirlwind. I said all that to say this, learn to just be the whirlwind, let life move through you, relax a little bit. They're telling you, you see, they're selling you God. It's like selling, it's like selling water to the ocean. You don't need nothing to be close to God. You don't need nothing to be an expression of God. You're already that. So stop selling your soul. For a little piece of knowledge, you're already rich. See, the shit you're doing to me look as dumb as the Bible story of Esau and Jacob. You saying, damn Esau, you sold your whole birthright, my G, for a piece of fucking pottage, my nigga? Like your whole birthright, homie? That shit sounds like trading in a mansion for a fucking tent. You feel me? It don't make no sense. And so that's what I see right now in the conscious community. You are trading in <laughs> your ability to be free in your thought life, the ability to just flow with life and be God no matter where you are, what you eat, no matter how you dress, to be who you always were. And you're trading that shit in for a little information on epigenetics. For a little information on the conductiveness of melanin. For a little information on ciphering the matinetta or whatever the fuck it's called. You feel what I'm saying? What the fuck? Do you not realize that freedom and liberty are to be valued above all things? Above epigenetics? <laughs> whatever the fuck it is y'all out here selling y'all soul for, dog. Freedom. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm going to put it to you like this. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What does it profit a man to gain all the knowledge in the world and lose his soul? What does it profit, y'all? It don't. It don't profit. Don't be like Esau. Man, they reeling y'all in with this conscious candy. That's what I call it, conscious candy. Kidnapping your, your little bitty mental self. <laughs> but look, y'all, like, people, for real, real. I know I'm joking and shit, but, like, for real, though, they like kidnapping y'all with this conscious candy. Thinking you finna get some shit, but you selling your whole fucking soul for a piece of information that really is in the bigger scheme of things useless. Useless and irrelevant in the fucking bigger scheme of things. You you disconnecting yourself from your connections, calling them attachments and shit. You feel what I'm saying? And you're going to find yourself fucking lonely in the world by yourself. Hmm? And then you'll realize... That life is about relationships. Life is about connections. Life is about love. See, when you cut off all your connections, thinking you're cutting off your attachments, you're going to fucking hemorrhage spiritually. You're going to hemorrhage. And then you're going to realize the value of what the fuck you cut off. Mm hmm. Yeah. What the old folks say, you never miss your water till your well run dry. Y'all go ahead. Cut it off. Cut it off. What the, what, what's y'all favorite saying? Yeah, I'm cutting off whatever not serving me. In 2018, as if you's a motherfucking king or some shit and everybody got to serve you. 
<laughs> that in itself shows that you don't realize that everything is you. While you not serving nothing, nothing serving you because it is you. So you sitting back with your hands folded and so will all your reflections sit back with their hands folded and everybody is going to fucking starve. Get your mind right, bro. You serve your reflections and your reflections will serve you and everybody gets served. Y'all think about what the shit y'all saying. Think about the ideologies that you implemented in your life before you do. You know, it's like when you go to the hospital, man, ask them what medication they giving you before you put that shit in your mouth. You don't know what the fuck you taking. And that's how y'all is. You, you know, the, the, the so-called spiritual doctors is, is prescribing you shit and you just taking that shit. You don't know what the fuck in it. You don't know the side effects of it. You don't know nothing. You just, oh, I trust you. Taking it like as if and don't y'all know that most of these doctors don't give a fuck about your life. The same thing is true in the spirit. Most of these so-called spiritual doctors don't give a fuck if you start hemorrhaging spiritually. They got paid, though. I got my money. You feel what I'm saying? You got to start taking responsibilities for yourself, bro. Stop putting the responsibility for your spiritual growth in other people's hands and then want to blame them when you end up in the motherfucking ditch. Then want to cry rape, cry slavery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you was a willing slave at first because they sold you a fucking dream. You the one bought the dream. You the one bought the dream. Now, now that you realize that you bought a dream, which turned into a nightmare, what do you do now? What do you do now? Huh? You take accountability for your own situation. You take responsibility for the shit that you got yourself in. Understand? Because the master came there because you was already a slave. That's right. The slave will give birth to her master. Chaos will give birth to order. Darkness will give birth to light. Silence give birth to that still small voice. Just like demand gives birth to supply. Cause gives birth to effect. The student will always call forth the teacher. Your subjective reality gives birth to your objective reality. Front gives birth to back. Your spirit gives birth to matter. Adam gave birth to Eve. And the Antichrist gave birth to the Christ. Humans give birth to God. Ooh, that's a deep one. Humans give birth to God. Oh, I know my religious people is catching convulsions on that one. <laughs> yeah, humans give birth to God. That's right. God gave birth to humans so humans could give birth to God. Facts. God became man so man can become God again. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. Facts. Injustice. Gives birth to justice. Ooh, what you say, Krista? Are you telling me injustices give birth to justice? Yes, if only you had eyes to see and ears to hear. You see, you see injustices. Oh, he got murdered. Oh, that was unjust. Yeah, but you don't understand. See, your thoughts are not God thoughts. Your ways are not God's ways. See, you don't know what happened last life. <laughs> See, you only think in terms of one life. God thinks in terms of eternity. The universe, the oversoul, thinks in terms of eternity. So what you may deem injustice may be very just indeed. Mm -hmm. Lies give birth to the truth. What do you mean, Crystal? Lies give birth to the truth. Yeah, even Apostle Paul said that. My lie abounds to God's truth. Then why am I therefore counted as a sinner? Lies give birth to truth. Look at the movies. How much truth have your ass got out of the movies? That's right. Every time a new one come out, especially the more sci-fi it is, you pulling truth out of there all day long. You even, you, you even cite movies as proof of the truth that you spitting. So you using lies <laughs> to display the truth. Mm. So you telling me truth can be birthed from lies, Crystal? That's right. That's what I'm saying. Just like a master can be birthed from a slave. Just like grace was birthed from the law. Yeah. For all my religious folks out there, you know, you've ever heard that the law was the ministry of death written and engraved on stones. But it was through the law that 
grace was birth. Mm -hmm. That's right. Another one, y'all. Did you know that death births life? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Death is the foundation for life. I know, I know. I know it's difficult thinking along these terms because it's synthesizing the yin and the yang, the positive and the negative. And hopefully you getting some light because, see, that's what happens when you synthesize the, the opposites. When you bring them together, you get light, you get life and you get love. You understand? Yeah. Death is the foundation of life. Now, what do you mean by that, Crystal? What the hell do you mean death is the foundation of life? Ain't they totally separate? Ain't they totally opposite and different from each other? No, they're not. As I said at the beginning of this audio, everything that you perceive as opposites share the same nature. Opposite degrees. I'm going to say that again. Share the same nature, but opposite degrees. Like you've known God and the devil. Same nature. Opposite degrees. One said to be good, one said to be bad. Well, life and death are not so different. Death is the foundation of life. Let me explain. Let me explain so you can understand a little bit better. You see, there's two ways we characterize death. We say something is dead if it, number one, don't exist. If we don't see it, it's dead. So say your great grandmother, you don't see her. She doesn't exist in this realm. So you say she's dead. So death is non-existence. There's another type of death. We say anything is dead if we don't see any change. See, say, for instance, a rock. See, a rock exists. So it's not dead in that way. We can see it. So it's not dead in that way. But because it exhibits little to no change, we say that it's dead. Now, we say the tree is alive because we see the tree changing and growing and expanding, blah, blah, blah. Right? But I want you to understand what life is. Life is change. Is it not? Life is change. Is it not? Again, like I said, a rock is said to be dead because it does not change. If this very moment was frozen... Frozen. You, you ever seen those sci-fi movies where they freeze time and everybody's just like stuck? Everything around him is frozen. If this moment in time was frozen, would you would you say that this is life living? No, you would say that for all intents and purposes, everything's dead right now because there's no movement. There's no change. Right. But do you realize that death makes change possible? Death makes change possible. And so therefore, death is the foundation for life. If you take away death, you take away life. Hmm? You see, this is why a vampire is said to be immortal. Because the vampire exhibits no change. So the vampire is said to be dead, but yet alive. You understand? But why, why? We see the vampire is alive. So why do we say the vampire is dead then? It's moving around. It's talking. It's doing all this shit. So it's clearly alive. It eats and, and, and kills and it's alive. So why do we consider the vampire dead? We consider it dead because it exhibits no change. And do you realize if there were no change in life, life would be considered death. But death is what causes that change. So death is indeed very real and very true. The foundation and cause of life, of life itself. If you take away death, you take away life. Life will become death once you take away death. Hmm? So then you begin to look at death in a different light. You see, when death take off his suit, you realize there's really life underneath and when life take off its suit, you realize it's really death underneath. 
And so, too, when the slave take off his suit, you realize it's a master underneath. And when the master takes off his suit, you realize it's a slave underneath. When order takes off his suit, you realize it's chaos underneath. And when chaos takes off his suit, you realize it's really order there. And when lies take off his suit, you see that it's really truth. And when truth take off his suit, you realize that it's really lies. And then when injustice unzips its suit, you realize it's really justice under there. <laughs> and when effect takes off its suit, you realize it's just another cause that's going to create another effect. And when your subjective reality take off its suit, you're going to realize that your subjective reality will give birth to your objective reality. So you will be more careful about what you think. You will be more careful about what you feel. And you will realize that what is on one side of the skin is the same thing as what's on the other side. That there is really no subjective reality and objective reality separate. That they're together. They're one and the same. Just like Eve came out of Adam. Your external reality comes out of you as well. That's why it says when, when God brought Eve to Adam. Adam said bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. You see when you, when you awaken. See, God had to put you in a deep sleep to take Eve out. But once you awaken from that deep sleep, you realize that the world is bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. That everything in the reality around you comes from a piece of you. And you are more careful. Mm -hmm. You are more careful. So take accountability today. Take responsibility. Take authorship dictatorship of your own life, of your own thought life first. It's not about behavior modification. It's about heart transformation. Where the mind goes, the man follows. I'm going to say that again. It is not about behavior modification. It's about heart transformation. And when I say heart, I mean mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hmm? Yes. Understand what was written on the walls for you to read. You see, everything around you, everything in your reality, are, they're all messengers. I'm a messenger. The movies are messengers. The Christian church, the is everything that is within your perception is a messenger for you. In the same way that all of your nerves are messengers for you. Well, they say, aren't they messengers for those who are to inherit salvation? You are that one that is to inherit salvation. And all of the world around you is a messenger preaching the gospel of Christ. Christ being wisdom. The wisdom of God of which everything that you see was founded upon. The wisdom of God is you. Preaching the good news of you. The reality of who you are. In all of your full potential. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. That's what the writing on the wall, the scriptures, the movies, everything that you see, the logos, the symbols, the oh, it's everywhere. That's right. It's everywhere. Didn't they tell you that whenever the resurrection occurred, that you will see that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess? Yes, it is everywhere. You just didn't understand it when they told you about it. Mm -hmm. You didn't understand that Jesus coming back on the clouds <laughs> meant something more or less inside of your mind, in your thoughts. And what I am saying, <coughs> <coughs> 
is not contradictory to the scripture because when you synthesize the positive and the negative, the inside and the outside, you realize they're one and the same. But it got to happen inside before it happens outside. Yes, there may be a real Jesus floating down on clouds, but understand that it has to happen in you first. And if it don't happen in you, it'll never happen outside of you. Because the outside is simply a carbon copy. And when I say carbon, I mean exactly what I just said. Carbon copy. That is the beast, the 666 that you are under because you think that the carbon copy is the original and it is not. Be ye not conformed to the carbon copy, this world. But be ye transformed by the original or the renewing of the original, which is your Mind. Everything outside of you is created from carbon, even your own body. But note that it is just a carbon copy of that which is the first and the original, the absolute, the foundation of all, which is spirit. Hmm? It's a mirror. But go to the source and change things at the source. You have that power. Now, let me see some of these comments. Thank y'all all for tuning in. I missed y'all so much. It's been a while since I've been on here. I've been just kind of, uh, you know, contemplating, meditating. I, I fast. I, I fast. And what I mean by fast is, again, everything happens in the spirit before it happens in the physical. I fast mentally. That is the what, what fasting is technically supposed to be about, meaning don't really watch TV, don't really communicate with other people. Like I don't allow things to enter into my my mental space because I'm working on something. You feel what I'm saying? They say the temple was built in silence. And so I ain't been answering messages. I haven't been doing none of that because I've been building some shit, y'all building and don't worry don't worry i'm sharing it all <laughs> i'm gonna share it all now let's see oh they said oh todd that's a shame what happened todd i can't scroll up any further i don't know what happened alicia said i was wondering where you were you keep me up on the facebook live community i would have probably missed this if it wasn't for you thanks again i miss crystal's voice oh thank you todd for tagging alicia Todd says, I received uploads from you, Alicia and Crystal, Yeshua, Margie, and Ancestors. Aww. Katovia, hi, Katovia. How are you? Todd says, Mason, Masonic, Shriners, facts. Facts. Are hi, Zena. Zena says, this is so real. Speak truth. Yeshua Islam. Yeah, Todd. I, I, Yeshua, I always say Jesus. It's it's out of habit. But yes, properly Yeshua. Aristotle reads says facts I needed this God, yo. Good, Aristotle. You know, like like they say, <laughs> when the student is ready, the teacher appear. When you have the question, the answer is already present and it will gravitate towards you. So apparently, you know, I wouldn't be doing this God, yo, if it hadn't been called forth. Uh, by by, you know, internal desires of multiple people, you know, and that's how this comes about. And so, you know, you you called this forth, period. That's right, Todd. Zena says, well, I don't want to be a slave no more. Call me Chucky. I'm going to put a perm on this attitude. <laughs> Go get me some donuts. <laughs> Javon. Hi, Javon. Javon says, you, what you are, do what makes you happy, whether it's food, clothes, lifestyle, etc. Facts, you know, and, and not so much about what makes you happy, Javon, because see, when we say that, a lot of people can, um, you know, think it's a fucking free for all at that point. Just do whatever makes you happy. There's no rules. There's no morals. There's no values. Just do what makes you happy. And in reality, it should be more tailored towards do, um, do according to your nature. You feel what I'm saying? And it, it's a little bit different. Just meditate on that. You know, meditate on what exactly that means. But we should definitely do according to our nature. Because sometimes what makes us happy goes against our nature. So we have to first figure out what our exact nature is and do according to that nature. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like a a, 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 a plant can't do what a 
a fucking ant does. A plant cannot do what an ant does, even though they names sound similar and shit. Plant, ant, feel what I'm saying? They they are two different natures, and so we have to. The ant might like doing shit that the plant like doing, but it might not be good for him. So we need to each figure out what our nature is because spiritually we are all different. We are created equal, but in our equality, there are differences. That's the dual nature of this world. And so we should figure out what our nature is and do according to that. What makes us happy within those parameters? (laughs) Everybody got choices, like they say. Todd Randolph says freedom of choice is what we want. Freedom of choice is what we got. Facts, Todd. Facts. Exactly what I'm saying. There, there is, there is some freedom and liberty within uh, your choices, but it's best to get within your nature and pick from the choices in those parameters. You feel what I'm saying? But we got to figure out what our nature is, and and so much what I mean by this mental slavery is that we are going according to other people's nature. It worked good for them, so we're tacking on what worked for them for us to our detriment. You understand? And telling everybody that if you don't do it my way because this is what works for me, then you're going to die or you're going to hell or you're going to jail or you're going to something. You feel me? Yeah. Let's see. Todd Randall says fear, shame, self-doubt, Stockholm Syndrome. Exactly, Todd. We are energy. Exactly. And energy, you know, can neither um, energy can either die or be destroyed. It can only be transformed and that's what it is. That's what I'm saying. Transform your mind, man. Fuck all that stupid shit. Like nobody can really enslave you unless you consent to be a slave. Nobody can abuse you unless you consent to be abused, either by your fear of dying, your fear of going to hell, your fear of going to jail. It's a fear of something. You see, but perfect love cast out fear. We need to get rid of the fear and look in the light of eternity, which is there is no death. There is no technical hell unless you create it for yourself by thinking that there is a hell. <laughs> Irony. Shit. <It's, laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Uh, no is the key. Javon says no is the key to success. Keys unlock doors of yourself. Facts, Javon. Life is what we make it. Exactly, Todd. That is more true than people actually realize it. People think that's just some bullshit axiom that was taught to you in school. But no, (laughs) no, no, no. It is actually truer than we really care to believe. You know, and and see, like I said, life and death are the same. It's the same nature, different degrees. Understand that in this realm where we're in right now, we call it life, but it's really death. What do I mean by that? It's really death in the fact that it takes a very long time to manifest some shit in in this this frequency range that we're in. You understand? So just like I said, we look at a rock and we say that a rock is dead because it exhibits very little change. So, too, in this world, this particular dimension that we're in, it's a dimension where you manifest according to your thoughts, but it's so fucking slow. It's so fucking slow that people don't actually realize how their thoughts are manifesting their life. So this is actually the world of the dead. Because, see, when you go into the higher realms, you manifest shit instantly. Like you think about it and boom, it's there. Now, see, it's a grace that we're in this particular dimension because we have not gained control of our uh, our thought life yet. We aren't sovereign over our own thoughts. So you fuck around and think about something really scary in, in what we call the death, the afterlife. And it will manifest right in front of your eyeballs. You feel what I'm saying? So it's a grace period being in this land of the dead, for lack of better terms, because here you can learn to control your power, which is the power to create, the power to change, the power to manifest. You understand? Because when you get into the higher realms, your thoughts manifest instantly. So you better be you better uh, be be free from fear. And things like that because you will literally manifest that shit. So this is a grace period here. This is technically considered death compared to the higher realms where manifestation is actually way fucking quicker than this. Let's see. Todd says, unexplored, adventurous, prudent, and noble. Godlike mind manifestation. I dreamed of lions and tigers living in my house with our house. It was very calm. Mm, that's interesting. Hi, Daryl DeBarbera. Peace, peace. 
Todd Reynolds, life choices, poor in spirit or rich in spirit. Well, yeah, you see, they, they, they say that you are poor because you're poor spiritually. That's what the scripture says. And that's basically just showing us the idea of how it is inside is how it's going to ex- display outside. You feel what I'm saying? So anybody that you see in poverty physically, it is only because of their spiritual poverty. And the same is true of slavery. If you see anybody in slavery physically, it's only because of their internal slavery first. You feel what I'm saying? Because everything originates in the spirit first. The spirit is the foundation of all things. As they say, God is spirit, right? Javon Hammond says, I think they mean an imbalance because we've been in cities for too long. That's why connect back is critical. Yeah, I understand. You must be talking about the back to nature uh, movement. Um, Yeah, I understand what they mean by that. But what I am saying is that uh, because of people's lack of understanding or overstanding, rather, people will take the slogan back to nature as if to say we are away from nature. And people really do believe that you actually have to be in some location to be connected to God or nature. People really do believe that you have to eat a certain way to be connected to God and nature. And so they get confused in thinking, especially now it's the tropics. At, tropics. at one point it was Africa. And some, some people, there's some communities that say the center of the earth, uh, uh, which is uh, where all compasses point north uh, is where you need to be to be close to God. And, you know, everybody's got different ideas of what you need to do and be to be close to God. And it's basically the same thing that we've seen in religion, where religion said, hey, you got to do this. And everybody had the fucking truth. You know, us Protestants over here, we got the truth and the Baptists ain't got it. These over here say, I got the truth and this one ain't got it. I'll teach you how to get to God. I'll show you how to get, have a closer relationship with God. And so it's the same thing. But instead of saying God, now we say nature. So now everybody's got the truth. I'll show you how to get back to nature. I'll show you how to get back to nature. No, don't believe him over there. He's not really connected to God. I mean, nature. I'll, I'm the one with, who's in nature. Look at me. You, you see what I'm saying? It's fucking bullshit. Like, let's just be real about it. <laughs> it's just motherfucking bullshit. The, the real facts is what religion didn't teach you and what this conscious community is not going to teach you because the conscious community is all about getting your attention in the same way that the religion was all about getting your money because attention is money. Your focus is your currency. You feel what I'm saying? So it's, it's really, it's the same shit. And so they don't really care to tell you the truth, which is there's nothing you could possibly do in life or death to separate you from God. So they are selling water to the motherfucking ocean is what I'm saying. You are God all day, every day, no matter what you eat, where you go, whatever. Besides God, there is no substance here. So if you say that you're not God, then what the fuck are you? Because besides God, there is no other substance here. What are you? (laughs) You have no choice but to be God. If you exist, you're God. You feel what I'm saying? Whether you're a tree, a rock, a bird, it doesn't fucking matter. So the fact that people believe, you're nature. Nature's everywhere. Nature's in outer space. Every other planet is part of nature. Every tree, every sky, every table, every mattress, every any fucking thing you could possibly think of or perceive is part of nature. Because besides nature, there's nothing else here. Nature is everything. You cannot destroy nature. Understand? You see what I'm saying? So when people say get back to nature, that's to assume that we was disconnected from nature at some point. No, we were never disconnected from nature. We were disconnected from the the knowledge that we are nature, but we were never disconnected from nature. Nigga, you are nature, dog. Like, I don't give a fuck where you at. If you're there, nature's there. Like, you feel what I'm saying? You could be in a black fucking box, just you in a black box cast in the outer space where there's no oxygen, no light, no nothing. And guess what? Nature will be in that black box. Guess why? Because you're there. (laughs) And all you have to do is connect back to the inner you, the true you. Connect back to yourself and you've connected back to the foundation of everything you see, hear, smell and touch. And that's what they're not going to tell you. Because that's counterproductive to the cause. You feel what I'm saying? You got to feel like you're missing some shit so they can supply whatever it is that you think that you're missing. (laughs) You feel what I'm saying? Same thing with religion. They tell you that you're damned. Here, let us help save you. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And just where are they saving you from? You feel me? So they got they got to make creative. They got to create a problem so they can feel it. 
you know? It's like a it's like a doctor who makes you sick so he can be your doctor. <laughs> Some fucked up ideology. But whatever. It's just my thoughts, it's just my perception, it's just the way I see it. You feel what I'm saying? Donna Spivey. Hi Donna. Thank you for tuning in. Zena says, Woo child, you on point as always. <laughs> Thank you, Zena. A lot of affirmations from Todd. Donna Spivey says, this is good. Thank you, Donna. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. She's always on point, Donna Spivey. Stay tuned. Speak Mother Moon facts. Crystal D. Peace, Crystal. How are you? I know you're doing well. I'm just asking out of formality. I already know you're doing well. I check up on you often in the spirit, of course. And uh, you're doing well as I always knew you would. Crystal D says, every time I come here, I feel whole because you are whole, Crystal. And see, that's that's the thing. We are all already whole. And the 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 objective of a lot of people is not to show you what you already are, but to make you believe you're missing some shit in order so they can pseudo supply that and you're already whole I'm not giving you anything other than what you already are I'm just showing you yourself your true reflection of yourself which is perfect and whole and loving and completely complete perfectly perfect right now right now right now I don't care what you're wearing. I don't care where you are. I don't care how you talk. I don't care about none of that. The facts are the facts. And you are perfectly perfect right now. Facts. Daryl says you're off the chain, sister. Yeah, thank, thank you, Daryl, because, you know, I don't like chains. My nigga, I don't really care for chains too much. You know what I mean? I'm I'm like Lauren Hill, like Lauren Hill say, you put me in the box, bitch, I'm gonna get out. You feel what I'm saying? I don't really care for change. Like that's not my, that's not my thing. So yeah, I'm definitely off the chain and I plan on staying off the chain. <laughs> Alicia says change is the only constant fact, Alicia. Fact. There's a, 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 a breathing going on in life. Life is a breathing. That's why they say the spirit is the Ruach or the Numa, which is, which is breath. Because all of life breathes. If you look at the four seasons over a time-lapse video, you will see that even the flowers, the trees, it breathes out. And then, you know, flowers bud and life happens, what we call spring and shit. And then you'll see it, it, it inhale, which is winter, and everything dies. All the life gets sucked out of the flowers, gets sucked out of shit. And then you'll see the life go back in it and then the flowers bud and the birds sing and then the inhale comes and in winter time everything gets dark and quiet and sh and it continues on and on and so if we can grasp the idea that no matter what you create in this life time will wear that shit away if we can grasp the idea of everything that you love everyone that you love in this form of life We'll eventually have to move on into another dimension. Then death won't be so horrible for us. Then living life won't be. We, we will become accustomed to the change. It is only because we do not want to change with life. We're not flexible that it hurts. If we become more flexible with the change of life, the, 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 the out and the in, the inhale, the exhale, the, the breathing, what they call the big bang and the. The big come back in, then life will be easier for us. Yeah. Plain Jane. Hi, Plain. Thank you for tuning in. Plain Jane says, breaking chains. Exactly. Polarity. Bertha, baby. James, thank you for tuning in. Bertha, baby. I am abysmal. Peace, family. Peace. Yeah. Facts. Breaking chains. Alicia says, I fast all the time. Yeah, and it's good. It's good to physically fast from food and all the other shit, but food is really the information. Information that you receive in your mind, again, like I said, it solidifies, slows down, and turns into uh, the comings and goings of your life. So if you fast mentally, sometime in your timeline, you'll see your body fasting. But it starts in the spirit first. So do be sure to fast, which basically means don't watch any television. Don't allow any external thoughts or stimulation into your mind. And just be alone in your mind with your thoughts. Facts. Heal in the building. Miss you, sis. Miss you too. 
Yes, Katovia says, hi, beautiful. Hi, Katovia. How does ancestors at sound? How does ancestors at sound? I don't know, Javon. You're going to have to... Uh, Javon says, way. I, I don't know. Rewrite that, Javon, so I'll know what you're trying to say. I'm not really sure. <laughs> At least this year, God, God damn it. <laughs> Javon says, I feel you clean facts on the nature tip. Yeah, it's not that connecting back and going back barefooted and doing those things are not good things. Those are definitely good things. I just don't want people to get confused into thinking that somehow doing those things make you more God. They don't make you more God. They don't make you more of an expression of God. They don't make you more of a child of God. They, they, they're like, um, they're supposed to be, they're supposed to be external uh, confirmations of something that already happened internally. It's kind of like in the Christian church w when they would do baptism, you'd go up there, the preacher would dunk you in water. The actual dunking you in water actually did nothing to change your spirit. But the dunking you in water, the baptism in front of all the congregation was supposed to be a, a physical representation a visual representation of something that's already happened in the spirit. And so too with this back to nature movement. It's supposed to be a physical representation of something that's already happened in the spirit. But what we're seeing here is that people are going back to nature without actually going back to nature internally first. You feel what I'm saying? And so I don't want people to think that by dunking themselves in a, a tub of water that it actually changes who the fuck they are. You feel what I'm saying? And so to running out in nature doesn't actually change who the fuck you are. You have to do that shit internally first and then you're supposed to show it expressingly and visually for the world to see. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Let's see. Alicia says, that's why whatever you plant your feet is home. Facts. Exactly, Alicia. What, what they say, home is where the heart is. <laughs> Todd says, connect back to the God within you. Ma your manifestation of God is God. Am, am. Facts. Javon says, ancestor, way, sound. Should we follow their teachings? Oh, the ancestors' ways were more sound. Should we follow their teachings? See, this is this is this is what I do, uh, Javon. I um, I call myself. Uh, it's a little pseudo name I, I give for what I do. I'm a thought reaper, is what I call it. A thought reaper. I I generally go around um, reaping thoughts, but I I do it in a way from my internal compass. I'll ask a question, and when I say ask, I don't mean with my mouth. I mean with my spirit. I'll deeply desire to know something, and then I will have faith and trust the fact that the universe will guide me to that thing and then if i feel led to click on youtube i'll click on youtube if i feel led to click on facebook whatever you know i just kind of let go i kind of flow with it and whatever you know boom and i'll click on youtube and i'll click on a video and hot damn if that ain't the answer to my question but the way it happens is that i know that i was led there because i've completely let go of the will you see what i'm saying i'm not searching for the information i simply ask and I went on about allowing life to flow through me. And, and, and through that process, by letting go of the will, I was driven by the universe, the spirit, God, the higher power, whatever term you want to give it, to my answer. And so that's what I do. I reap thoughts from different places wherever the spirit shows me that I need to be. I call that oversoul, that entity spirit. Everyone has different names for it to each his own. I call it spirit. Some people call it source. Some people call it universe. Some people call it Gaia. Some people call it mother nature. There's all kinds of different names for it. Either way it goes, the object of, of knowledge here is that there's a spirit. There is a force out there that is intelligent, that is omnipotent, that is, um, that is alive, and that is conscious, okay, that can direct you if you allow it. And that's the thing. We need to let go and let God, like the saying says. <laughs> <laughs> and it will take you to exactly, <coughs> God bless the truth, it will take you exactly to the information that you need specific to your growth, specific to your 
purpose. You see, if you if you direct yourself in what you need to know, you may be learning shit that has nothing to do with what you need to be doing. You see what I'm saying? Everybody has a perfect a, a purpose here. And so it's best to learn that which is, is specific to your purpose and forget the rest of that shit. It's not for you to know anyway. It's like being a doctor, but you learn this shit in algae, agriculture and how to plant plants and shit. Like you're just wasting time. Like that has nothing to do with your purpose. You need to be focusing on the body, how the body works, shit like that. But because we don't know our purpose, we don't know what we should study. And this is where trusting that internal compass I'm always talking about comes in handy because the spirit, the omnipotent one knows your purpose. You understand? So if you don't know your purpose yet, it is best to trust that entity to show you what information you will need. And when you actually step in your role, in your purpose, then you will see that everything that you were shown and learned up until that point was exactly what you needed and nothing more and nothing less. Facts. Todd Randolph says they have created an industry of fears, promoting negativity in the media, people buying guns for self-defense, not realizing the God in their thoughts is their protection from their self. Where are we at? Love is the key to life. Overstanding change. No pulpit preaches aloud. Just the spirit of love. Yes, Todd. Yes, the spirit of love. And you are right about that. They're creating an industry off of fear, you know, and 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 you're the you're the battery of that industry. And you don't have to consent to participate in that shit anymore. Just just become a master of your own self enslaved to your own will. And then there's no room for no other slave. There's no room for no other master because you've taken all the positions. No longer hiring. You feel what I'm saying? No vacancies in this motherfucker. There's no room for a master. No room for a slave, bitch. I'm playing all the roles. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, shit. Javon says, I see a lot of men in the crayon conscious community. We need more women. Y'all the true mystery. Ooh, that's good, Javon. That is good. I have another Gaudio coming up talking about the Mystery Babylon, and I want to explain to everyone what the Mystery Babylon truly, truly is, because there's so many ideas out there. But I want to basically express what my perception, what my idea of what the mystery Babylon is and how the system actually works. And I think a lot of people will be kind of surprised as to uh, some of the things that I may say in it. But it's all truthful. It's all verifiable information. It's just not shit that we discuss often uh, because of the type of information. But anyway, that one's coming up, too, in the near future. Alicia says, facts, magic happens fast. Whatever you want to know just comes quickly. Exactly. Once you've been magnetized, Alicia, there's a thing that's called the at the at one mint, uh, which is something that happens in your mind. It's like a, a bolt of information. Uh, some people have labeled it a download because that's what it feels like. It feels like a whole bunch of information gets downloaded to your mind. Um, and again, your mind is shaped like a magnet because indeed it is. But as all magnets have no magnetic power until it's hit with a bolt of electricity, then it can attract metal. So, too, your mind has no attraction power until it is hit with that bolt of lightning we call God. And then it can attract it. it, it the law of attraction actually works for it. You understand? So it's it's really a blessing that a lot of people aren't able to attract with their mind uh, um, their likeness because it's not a very nice thing. So normally when you get to a certain stage of unfoldment, a certain stage of consciousness, you will have this experience called the atonement, which essentially turns you into a magnet. For everything you could possibly want. So it is best that you be uh, responsible and be able to wield that power or you will attract to you fucked up shit. So it's a it's actually a grace and a mercy that God postpones um, you having this experience until you actually have become sovereign over your own thoughts, a master over your own self. Feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So you actually are a magnet. Mm hmm. Javon says internal compass. Attach what we are not what we want facts when you're feeling up you're on track when you're feeling down you're off track 
Yes, very good. Let me read that again in a way that y'all can understand. Javon says the internal compass attach what we are, not what we want. When you're feeling up, you're on track. When you're feeling down, you're off track. Now, uh, let, let me expound on what Javon just said there, because that's something very pivotal. Javon is basically in a, a text form trying to uh, explain or elucidate how you follow your internal compass. If you pay attention to there's a, a place right at the center of your being uh, for male, well, even for females, for females in between your breast and for males in between your nipples. Uh, if you put your your hand right in between your nipples and you go down about, say, mm, about four or five inches right there, there's a, a little notch where your ribs meet up called the sternum, the sternal uh, sternal notch or whatever. Right in that area, you will feel whenever you are. Um, that's like the, the the center of your being. Whenever it's something that is right for you, you will feel yourself expand there. You will literally feel yourself open up like you it flowers out like a flower. Now, you have to be you have to really train yourself to to feel your energy field. OK, it's just not something that that people normally pay attention to, but you can train yourself to feel your energy field. And like I said, it's located right there. And when something is wrong, something is off, something is not right. You will feel that that place right there began to tighten up. You feel it literally like close up. So if you if you become sensitive to its openings and closings, then you will be able to know by the influx and, and the ebb and flow of your intuition of what is right and what is wrong for you. But you again, it's like a muscle. You have to become skilled at discerning its openings and closings. You dilate and you constrict your spiritual being, you know. So very good, Javon. That is correct. Facts. Javon says, I meant we attract what we want, not what we are, right? No, no, no. You attract what you are. You attract what you are for the most part. But in terms of as far as the at one meant that little um, that experience I was talking about where you get magnetized or your brain is actually magnetized and it has the ability to attract things you attract what you are what I mean by that is is you um what's that saying the I am the I am saying I am that I am what do they say let the weak say I am strong so when you say I am strong you attract strength to you you see what I'm saying because all of all of life is a mirror so you have to be it to attract it so you it doesn't matter if you want it. The sheer fact of you wanting it means you're not going to get it. Exactly. Technically. You feel what I'm saying? You have to have it already. And this is why I say when I have a question, when I have a question, I, I desire to know deep down within myself. But immediately after that, I have what did I say? I have faith and trust. That it will come to me. And meaning it is already mine. And I guess I should explain that a little bit more, but there, there is a science behind it. See, to he who hath not, even what he has will be taken from him. So if you think that you don't know, even what you do know will be taken from you. So after you have a desire to know something, you must affirm to yourself that it is already within you, that you already have the answer. You understand? And then the answer will come to you because it's already within you. Does that make any sense? I know that was probably uh, neither here nor there, a little all over the fucking place. But but you have to have it before you have it. Another scripture says that believe it says whatever you ask for. Listen now. Listen, this this deep. Whatever you ask for. Believe that you have received it, not believe that you will receive it, not believe that it's on the way, not believe that. Believe that you have received it. Past tense. I mean, you already got the shit, even though you ain't got the shit. And then, and only then, it shall be yours. Understand what I'm saying? So you got to have it if you plan on having it. Because the external world will match 
what you already got in the internal world. So if you, but if you want some shit, that's all you're going to see outside of you is you wanting some shit. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So, but if you have it already, that's why I say, why I keep trying to tell y'all, you're already perfect. If only you could believe that you're already perfect, then you will see that manifested in your life. The law of attraction. But because you believe you missing some shit, you going to be missing some shit. Understand, this is your power as God. You see, God said, God said, God said, let there be light and light was. Now, if you saying to yourself that I need to do this shit to be this, then that's exactly what the fuck you got to do. You make the rules. You understand? So what I'm saying is the only the change that we have around us is the change that we're putting on ourselves. All you got to do is say, I am perfect right now, today. And guess what? So shall it be. So shall it be. You understand? You keep, we, we as people, we keep pushing back our salvation. We keep pushing back our infiniteness. We keep pushing it back by limiting our own selves. You see, God said, realize who God is. Whatever God says goes. You understand that? Do you know who you are? What are you saying today? Hmm? Are you saying that you got to live a certain place to be what you always is and always was? Because if that's what you're saying, then that's what it is. You see, God said, God said, God said, let there be light and light was. And I'm saying, I'm saying you are already perfect and you are. Hmm? Grasp what I'm saying, y'all. Grasp what I'm saying. This is some deep shit now. This deep. You'd be surprised the power of belief. <laughs> See, your belief, belief can be broken up into two parts. It could either be faith or it can be fear. That's it, period. Your belief is either a belief that's more properly termed faith or a belief that's called fear. Either way it go, you're going to manifest that shit one way or another. you either having a whole bunch of fears and you're going to manifest that shit. The scripture says that your fears will come upon you and overtake you. Or you can manifest your faith. It's up to you, but your belief is manifesting shit whether you want it to or not. Because your belief is you is what you're saying. You understand? If you believe that you're ugly, then you are saying I am ugly. And guess what? That's what you're going to be. That's why I say let the weak say that I am strong. And that's what he's going to be. Because as a as an expression of God, you have the power of your word. You can say it and it be so. So if you're weak, say that you are strong and it will be so. If you ain't got it, say that you got it and you're going to have it. You understand? But when you say you ain't got it, what are you putting in motion? What are you putting in motion as an expression of God endowed with the very same powers as God? When you say you are imperfect, what are you putting in motion? You understand that the universe or, or the some people call it the subconscious, whatever term you want to call it, that thing that makes shit happens. It's neutral. And it goes according to your decree. See, you're the author. Remember me telling you you're the author of your life story? That means you are the only authority here. And it obeys your word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. You understand? And so it obeys your word. So when you say by your belief that you are this and you are that, the universe, the whole entire universe, everything that you see or know conspires to bring that about. Mm -hmm. Didn't I say that ye are gods, what you thought I was playing? Yeah, facts. The whole universe conspires to bring that about. So be careful what you believe because what you believe is what you're saying. Let me prove to you that what you believe is actually saying some shit. You don't believe that, do you, huh? Let me show you. See, in the scripture, in the scripture, Jesus says, he says, take no thought for what you will be wearing. No, he says, take no thought for tomorrow by saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? 
paraphrasing something to that effect. But the, the point is, is Jesus said, take no thought by saying. So do you realize that thoughts are just like floating all out there and you take it and own it by saying. You understand? You take it and own it and you make it real. Like they say, if a, if a tree fall in the forest and nobody is there to hear it, did it ever make a sound? Hell no, it didn't. Why? Because you are sound. You understand? You make sound real. If your ears are not there to hear it, it does not exist. You make it real. And so too with everything else. Your belief and your saying makes it real. So you got to be careful what you believe about yourself. If you are weak, it doesn't matter. Start believing that you are strong. Start saying that you are strong and you will be strong. You will attract that to yourself. This is the law of attraction. This is the law that's been in effect this whole time. But because, like I said earlier, because there is a such an extended period between you sowing the thought and reaping it in life, reaping the manifestation, it was hard for us to see the strings. But you see, time is speeding up because we are changing from one frequency to another frequency and manifestation is speeding up, you guys. Sowing and reaping is speeding up, meaning the time between you, the time you sow the seed or the thought and the time you reap the harvest or the manifestation in your life is getting shorter and shorter. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's just like that pyramid you see on the back of the dollar. You see, back in the day, we was at the bottom of it. So, you see, one end of the pyramid, you could say sowing, and the other end was reaping. It was very far between the end. But when you get when you get up to the top by the eye, there's very little space between sowing and reaping. You see, until you get right there at the very tip top of the pyramid, the very top point of the pyramid where the eye is at and when you get to that dimension there is zero time between sowing and reaping you think it and it's there boom like that <laughs> that's what they call heaven <laughs> where you can create your own worlds that's why you see now they're coming out with games where you can create your own world it used to be where you could only play in the worlds that the game makers made for you now they got a game called Mario uh, Maker where you can actually make a Mario world just like the fucking game people do and play it. You feel what I'm saying? And this is because we are getting to the stage in our spirit where we can actually create worlds. You feel me? This is the heaven. I know this is hard for a lot of people to grasp because it's so far into what we're thinking, but this shit is real. It's, it's fucking real. I mean, you can accept it or not. It doesn't matter. You will come to the full realization and understanding of what I am saying at some point in time or out of time. Understand? Either in time or in eternity. Either way, what I am saying will be confirmed to you because this is the reality of this reality. And if you can grasp the science of it, then you can become a master of yourself and a slave of yourself. You become the spider who creates the web and the fly trapped in it. Understand? Yes. And that's where we are now. Hi, Sybil. Antonio. Hi, Antonio. Terry A. Brown. Thank you for tuning in. Cat Williams. Hi, Cat. Thank you for tuning in. Ruffin Christopher. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, yes. I'm so glad to see all y'all. It's been a while since I've seen y'all. Javon says, other way around. Laugh out loud. My bad. Facebook messing up my comments. Yeah, I figured I figured that's what it was, Javon. I know where you're coming from. I know you lit, Javon. Javon is lit. Yeah, hey, y'all. Hey, look, by the way, anybody who's listening to me right now, uh, look on my comment section here. You'll see Javon Hammonds. If you have not subscribed to his page yet, I implore you click out of here in a minute or whenever it's over or at some point in time, go to this man's page and click follow or subscribe or whatever it is that you got to do to get notifications from his uh, uh, timeline because this dude, I promise you. Uh, he, he's constantly evolving, uh, constantly coming up with new things to challenge your mind and your way of thinking. Uh, and, and, and I just implore you all to just go to his page, click on it, subscribe, follow, whatever you got to do. He lit, he lit, just saying facts. 
You can turn this into a job straight up. Exactly. Yeah, so anyway, you guys, um that's if that's if your page is, is public, Javon. I don't even know if it's public or not, but y'all can check it out. It's worth a shot. <laughs> What's his name? Javon J A V O N Hammonds. H A M M O N D S. Javon Hammonds. Yeah, he lit, y'all. He'll keep he'll keep you on the uh he'll keep you uh you know, where you need to be. He'll keep some some guardrails on your mind, right? That'll keep you on a narrow path because it is pretty narrow to keep your mind uh, where it needs to be according to your nature. You feel what I'm saying? So he got like guardrails. And so it, it's needful to have people on our timelines. Uh, and he does lives as well with, with wonderful discussions, question and answer sessions and, and just running back ideas. And it's a good thing to have people that we can express these kind of ideas with uh, that are somewhat on the same frequency and the same uh, thought thought wave that we are on, you know. It, it, it's, it's meaningful, you know, like I always say that connections are more meaningful uh, than anything. Um, and so we need more meaningful connections with each other, not just with our traditional family and friends, but with our extended family uh, and friends as we have um that that we have now uh, in in the so-called conscious community or within this digital world, so to speak, you know what I mean. And so it's just more reinforcement, and it, it helps you to be strong, and it helps you to get ideas and to get strength from each other. You know, there's strengths in numbers. I don't care what they told you. You know, they always talk about cut this off, cut that off, fuck her, fuck him. You feel what I'm saying? But there's strength in numbers, you guys. There's not just strength for a revolution. There's not just strength for some battle. But there's strength for every day. How many of you know that life is a battle? Life is a battle. Getting up in the morning, feeding your kids, going to work, doing everything that you need to do just to be alive is a battle. And so you need fortification, not just for extraordinary supernatural shit. You need fortification just for regular fucking life you feel what i'm saying so we need each other you guys that's all i'm trying to say we need each other more than our ego will allow us to admit but we do and there's strength in numbers and i'm just basically saying this dude right here he 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 dropping like like he dropping crumbs man he dropping crumbs you might be thirsty you might need to find your way home he got them crumbs he got that work all I'm saying there's a few others if I if I fail to mention your name don't worry you come a time where I mention yours I just say what what I'm led to say feel that so don't feel don't feel like I'm not uh, acknowledging you I see all y'all don't don't think I don't I'll be watching y'all and I will acknowledge you when the time is right when it's necessary to be acknowledged you feel what I'm saying but there's a time and a place for all things you guys and so we must remember that for you to hold damn fire. <laughs> I told y'all I'm bringing that gas. <laughs> I told y'all I'm bringing that gas. Yeah, I see you too, Sybil. Don't think I ain't see you this week. I did a little flipping through. Mm-hmm. I seen you too. You've been doing things. I be seeing a lot of y'all, but again, there's a time and a place for all things. I just implore y'all to keep going. I implore you to look within yourself, to uh, break the chains, whatever chains that you notice are tying you down. If it's fear, y'all need to face that shit. You feel what I'm saying? Whatever it is, man, don't let them put you in the box. Be who you were created to be. Be who you are and be confident in that you understand there's nothing more sexy than confident there's nothing more attractive than confidence whatever that may be i know y'all done seen these some raggedy motherfucker end up way on top and you like Ugh, like he ugly like he you know 
Like, what the what? You know what I'm saying? But dude is confident. You feel what I'm saying? So he got all these, this dude ugly than a motherfucker. Got all the women in the neighborhood on his shit. And you like, damn, I'm over here looking like Rico Suave. Like, I'm the shit. My edge is tight. You know what I mean? Like, I'm looking good. And he over here looking raggedy hair. Like, I mean, just toe up from the flow up. But got everybody. Why? That mouthpiece. That confidence. You feel what I'm saying? Confidence is attractive. Confidence is lovely. And so you can teach yourself to be confident. You don't have to naturally be confident. Teach yourself that shit. Do what do what people do when they try to take your confidence. They just keep attacking that shit. Attacking it until it's gone. You know, you ever been in a relationship with someone that kept telling you you was ugly or telling you some negative aspect and you heard it so fucking long that you actually start believing that shit? Well, let me tell you something. That principle works in the opposite way. Get in front of the mirror, and though you might not think you ain't shit, get in front of the mirror, look yourself in the eyes and say, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are perfect. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're going out today, and you're going to make a difference in life. People are going to look at you, and they're going to see your greatness a mile before you even get to them. Your, your, your... I mean, you got to really speak life to yourself. Speak as just as much life or, or if not more life than all the fucking death and evil that they done spoken to your life. You got to get to work. Didn't they tell you that this was a war? I don't know. Did they tell you this was school? That's what they told you, that this planet was school, that you're supposed to be learning some shit? <laughs> Yeah, it's that, but even more importantly, I want you to know that you are at war and the enemy is working while your ass sleeping. Understand that. And by enemy, I mean the other half of yourself. I don't ever want to separate no parts of this. But nevertheless, you in the game. It's like a football game. All Everybody work for self. It's like uh, both teams in the football game work for the, the NFL. What, what, what's that shit called? It's, a, it's an organization. National Football League. Yeah, both teams work for the National Football League. So I want you to understand that you and the enemy work for you. <laughs> you the... You the <laughs> both... The good and bad work for you, but that ain't the point. You still got a game to play. Understand? You still in the motherfucking game, regardless uh, uh, of y'all both working for the same team. So what I'm saying is, is the enemy is on the job. You need to get on the job, too. Every time they speak something negative into your life, every time that they tell you you ain't perfect and you feel like you got to do some shit to be a better person, you get yourself in that mirror, you close your eyes, do whatever you got to do and speak life to yourself. Remind yourself that you were born perfect and you will be perfect when you die. That imperfection is impossible for a being of your magnitude. You remind yourself of the truth in the face of all your haters. Prepare a table for yourself in the presence of all your enemies. Understand what I am telling to you. Hmm? Huh? Understand? Yeah. Like Sybil says, don't be so hard on yourself. Relax. Love yourself. Treat yourself how you would want a child to be treated. You understand? We so hard on ourselves. You wouldn't say half of the shit you say to yourself to a child. Do you realize that? Even if you is ugly, if there was an ugly little child, you wouldn't tell that little child, little child, you ugly. Don't nobody want you. But you, you, you sit there and you torture yourself with that bullshit over and over again. That's why, you know, everybody leave me in my life. I must not be worth loving. What am I doing wrong? I can't do shit right. Man, you love pity parties. You really do. You get the balloons. You blow them up. You got the drink. You got the smoke. You got the whole fucking pity party set up. And you finna sit here all fucking night and torture yourself. Remind yourself of all the people that left you. All the shit you did wrong when you didn't finish school. You'd probably be better off right now. But now you're struggling from hand to mouth. Bill from paycheck to paycheck, making ends meet, all kind of shit. I mean, you throw that pity party, bring your friends in. You start hearing in your head all the shit your mama said that was wrong with you. The shit your daddy said that was wrong with you. The time you got in a fight with your sister and she fucked you up. I mean, you just, you really do it big. You know how to throw a party. You really the fuck do. You really do. But I want you to understand that you're doing that shit to yourself. It's time for you to bust them balloons, blow out them candles. Put the party favors away. It's time to have a new party. Do you understand? It's time to have a new party. A party that's celebrating your greatness. Not your deficits. Not your liabilities, but your assets. Understand what I'm telling you. Because what you focus on will grow. Mm -hmm. 
See, we become addicted to our depression. We become addicted to our sadness. Somehow we feel like we need it and we're not the same without it. But you don't need that shit no more. Stop cutting off people in your life. What you need to cut off is the pity party. You need to cut off the negativity that you keep saying about yourself. That shit ain't true, even if it is true. Understand what I just said. That shit ain't true, even if it is true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you keep telling you affirm to yourself the truth of who you are, your greatness. Tell yourself that you are perfect now, today. I don't give a damn what situation you in, whether you living in the box or living in the mansion. You are perfect today. Right now. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to prove to you that you're perfect because God is perfect and God does not make any imperfect things. And if you disagree with that, then I don't know what to tell you. You already lost. Let the dead bury the dead. But I'm telling you that my God, my universe, Gaia, Mother Earth, the higher power, whatever name, Yeshua, I, whatever, you'd have, I'd have, whatever name you want to give the higher power, it's perfect. It's perfect. And it creates only perfect things, though it may look like you're imperfect. Remember, order comes out of chaos. Imperfection comes out of perfection. And you think you're imperfect. But again, just like life is death, imperfection is perfection. Claim that shit today. Today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Claim it today. You're perfect right now. God resides in you right now. Everything you do is what God is doing. Everything you say is what God is saying. Realize the beauty in that. Realize the wonder in the world around you. Realize the wonder in a raindrop, y'all. In a drop of water. Do you realize what's in a drop of water? Do you realize that the water on this planet is the water that was here 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 100,000 years ago? Every time you drink a glass of water, do you know that that very same water that is circulating through your body circulated through the ancient's body? It's the same water here. Water don't come in from out of space. It don't go out there and it don't come in. It just continuously recycles. So realize the memories that's in the water, the DNA that's in the water, the life in the very water that you drink. Stop focusing on this bullshit. There's wonders all around you, magic all around you. If only you have eyes to see and ears to hear. Understand? Hmm? Look at your world different. So anyway... I'm going to go ahead and click myself off of this thing. I probably will come back in about 15, 20 minutes and I'm going to do another one. Basically uh, showing you guys, uh, it, like I said, in a very practical way of how you are creating your reality, um, your future and your past right now. But I'm going to show you with an analogy from nature. Because again, when you get into these areas of thinking, it is very hard to to uh, express the unexpressible. So you're forced to use examples in nature from things that people know in order to express a greater truth, in order for your mind to even grasp what the fuck is going on. You feel what I'm saying? So that's what I plan to do in a few here and uh, show you in a practical way that you can understand of how you created this world that you live in and how inside of you right now is the future. The future lives in you. So thank you guys for tuning in again to another episode of Crystal Healing. Again, this is your host, Crystal Hill. And I love you all. Remember, we are all one love. We might not be one diet. We might not be one location. We might not be one religion. We might not be one race. And we might not be one anything other than... We are one love, you guys, and one spirit that runs in all. I love you and thank you and see y'all in a little while.